this is Dr. Elena Martil with Pharmacy Basics, and today I am here with another video, but all about general information about the PCAT. But before we start, you know how we do here. If you're new here, you may not know, but I love to create dialogue. So my pharmacy prospects, what do you know about the PCAT? My pharmacy interns, my veterans, and my practicing pharmacists, what did you know about the PCAT before you started applying to pharmacy school? And how did your PCAT score weigh into you getting into pharmacy school? Stop the video right now, go down to the comment section, and comment your thoughts. I would love to know. In this video, I will discuss a few things that I feel are necessary about the PCAT, PCAT scores, and general information that will help you pass any comprehensive exam. For starters, it will behoove you to know that there is no such thing as a good PCAT score, but there is a such thing as a competitive one. Now, this is just a disclaimer before I get into many details about what a competitive PCAT score is, because I don't want you to be deterred or anything by these numbers. Don't let these numbers infringe upon you applying to the school of your choice. With persistent healthy work ethics and faith, you can conquer your wildest dreams, for real. A competitive score on the PCAT is somewhere around the 50 percentile range. I mean, a really good competitive score will be something above the 70 percentile range. Notice I said percentile. A percentile is based upon how many people took the test at the same time you did and how well you did in comparison to them. So percentile and percent are two different things. Make sure you don't confuse those two. In my opinion, achieving a higher percentile score is harder than achieving a high percent. That's the reason why I say do not let these numbers infringe upon you and deter you away from applying to any pharmacy school because these numbers do not tell you if you're dumb. These numbers do not tell you if you're smart. They just tell you how you did in comparison to others. You have to look at comprehensive exams, especially ones that are scored based on percentile in a different way. It's some type of algorithm to these things. Think about it. Overachievers, people who make straight A's, B's, and people who are just considered to be smart, they usually set out to take the PCAT in the summertime or early fall, mainly because they just want to get it out of the way, they're already prepared for it, or even they're just trying to apply for early admissions. Now you have your average students, the ones who love the alphabets. They make A's, B's, and C's. It does not mean that they're not smart. It does not mean that they're dumb. Some people just don't apply themselves because they feel like it's not that big of a deal. You know, they just want to get the work done. You have those people who set out to take the test late fall or even early spring. And then you have your slack the ones who just, they don't care, honey. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why you would be a slacker. You could be just a serial procrastinator. And hey, you have those people in pharmacy school as well. But these type of people set out to take the exam late spring. They're waiting for the, for the last dates that the test can be administered to take your test. So common sense would tell anyone that you need to test according to your strength. If you are an average student, don't set out to take the test in the summertime or early fall. That's not your flow. Don't do that. You want to test in your range. You have to determine what type of student you are and test according to that. Now, what I'm telling you is not fact. This is just theory. This is based off of my experience. This is based off of what I heard while I was in school. And I mean, it kind of made sense based off of my score and when I took my tests. The next thing I will mention is how heavily the PCAT weighs into you getting into pharmacy school. If you have not already watched Applying to Pharmacy School Part 4, click this link right here to start watching. And when you have completed that video, make sure to come right back here so you can finish what you have started. In that video, I discuss all things that factor into you getting into pharmacy school. Depending on the school you choose to apply to, your score can make or break your acceptance. And the school that you choose really depends on your personality. It depends on you as a person. But I will say, do not be fooled by a big name. Do not be fooled by how long a school has been established. That will not make any difference when you actually get into the program.
What you really need to be worried about is whether that program offer you the resources that you need to be a successful pharmacist. And ultimately, are they preparing you to take that NAPLEX or the MPJE? Lastly, I want to say that studying for a comprehensive exam can be so difficult. That's why starting early is key and making sure that you're studying for a long period of time so that you know that you're really comprehending information and that you're not just not pumping and dumping. I will also mention that you will never feel prepared for a comprehensive exam. It's kind of like impossible in a sense because it's so much information on that exam and you don't know what you may get tested with. You know the particular subjects, but you don't know exactly what questions can possibly come from there. And the way that your teacher has presented those questions to you may not necessarily be the way that they're presented on the test. So, so having control of your mental will help you more than you think. The way that you prepare your mental is by looking at the breakdown of each test. So the PCAT consists of 192 multiple choice in a writing prompt. So this tells me that I need to be fluent in reading, writing, and comprehending. It's not so much about knowing how to calculate something, knowing biological and chemical processes, which are components of the test, but it's more so knowing how to recognize information and applying it in a timely manner. Preparing for a test that has a vast amount of subjects is always about application. So how well do you recognize that information and how well can you apply that information? With all this being said, I want to help you achieve the highest PCAT score you can achieve, even if it's not the only thing that factors into you getting into pharmacy school. Because if you are a good comprehensive test taker, then this is where you need to weigh heavily in and take advantage of your strengths. After I have done extensive research on how to prepare for this exam, I will create a video in detail on how you can ace the PCAT. Make sure that you always check the description box as I leave a bunch of juicy information that is valuable to you. So my pharmacy prospects, was this video helpful to you? If so, make sure that you click that button that looks like this down below. Also, my pharmacy veterans, my interns, my practicing pharmacists, did I miss anything? Is there any information that you feel that I should have included in this video that I did not? Make sure to comment down below. Leave your thoughts. I want to know as it can help myself in pharmacy prospects. This video can be found in the elementary school playlist. For more videos like this one and how to apply and get into pharmacy school, make sure you click right here to start watching. Again, this is Dr. Elena Martil with Pharmacy Basics. I hope that you all have a busy and blissful day.